Hi everyone, I'm Hilden Gomes, a master's student in the postgraduate program in environmental engineering from Instituto Federal Fluminense. I'm presenting our part of my research, the title is Urban Heat Island Systematic Review of Local Climate Zones for Application in Campus dos Goitacazes. So, the human interference in the ecosystems has been causing changes in the flows of energy and matter. One of these changes is the process of urbanization. The land use and land cover is modified, concrete takes place of the natural cover that was there previously. And as we know, the materials we use to build end up trapping more heat and make cities hotter than the natural, the rural surroundings. We also have the excess heat caused by the rapid increase of greenhouse gas emissions since the Industrial Revolution. That is causing the global warming, which has already exceeded 1 degree Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. The global and local scale warming add up and cities end up having a worse warming scenario. This warming is bad because high temperatures impact our lives in different ways. Around 55% of the world's population lives in cities and the UN estimates it should be 70% by 2050. Here in Brazil it is already close to 85%. So we need the implementation of measures to mitigate the warming in cities. Each, each city has its own characteristics, so there's first a demand to understand the local climate dynamics and the factors causing high temperatures in different cities. The urban heat islands are characterized by the manifestation of notably high temperatures in urban areas in relation to the surrounding rural areas. Its causing factors are the reduction of vegetation and the evapotranspiration. The vegetation provides shade and the evapotranspiration has a cooling effect. The other one is the prevalence of dark and low albedo surface. The surface absorb more heat. The last factor is the anthropogenic heat production from cars, refrigerators, air conditioning units and industries. The difference between the maximum of the urban temperature and the minimum of the rural temperature is called the intensity or magnitude of the urban heat island and this intensity depends on the urban features like form and function, the local meteorological characteristics like wind and solar radiation, uh, the urban materials and the presence or absence of green areas and the artificial heating and cooling of buildings, transport and indus industrial processes. The urban heat island is present at any latitude and can occur during the day or night depending on the local thermal balance. The intensity of the urban heat island increases during calm and clear days, although it's highly affected by sea breezes and precipitation. Some impact on the quality of life of urban citizens are the increased in energy consumption for cooling purposes, so also raising the electricity bill. The peak electricity demand increases during summer season, which can overload the grid and cause power outages. The deterioration of external and internal thermal comfort. The increases in concentration of harmful pollutants such as tropospheric ozone. And the serious impact on the health conditions of the vulnerable urban population. So there is an environmental and climate justice aspect as well. There are different types of urban heat islands, according to Amorim. The surface is about the temperature of the materials in the surface of the city. The canopy layer is about the air temperature below the level of the roofs. This is the most used because it is measured at the height where we are carrying out our activities and consequently where we are impacted the most. And the boundary layer is about the air temperature as well, but above the level of the roofs. And it is, it is mostly used to understand the meteorological effects of the human heat island. There are different analysis techniques. The time series analysis uses standard to weather stations and it is important to study trends and point out climate scenarios. The fixed and mobile trends enables experiments in smaller areas such as a neighborhood that have different land uses. 
The remote sensing allowed the classification of urban land use according to continental surface temperature, which is easy to acquire and also allows the spatial mapping of a large area. And the numerical modeling enables the simulation of other products besides temperature and, like remote sensing, the spatial mapping of a large area. Lucena evaluated these four uh, analysis techniques and Amorim highlights uh, uh, remote sensing and numerical modeling because it allows the analysis of, uh, the, of the temperature in a large scale while the weather stations and the transects allow the evaluation on a micro scale. But each technique is, is important and they can be used together in a complementary way. Stewart carried out a systematic, systematic review of the literature of studies on human heat islands and identified weaknesses. Later, he created the local climate zones classification systems, system. It allows the standardization of classification of urban and rural areas more specifically in 10 build types and 7 land cover types, as I'm going to show soon. It also allows the comparison of urban heat islands between cities. As the zones are standardized, cities in different places tend to have the same temperature difference, difference between the zones. You can see it in this image. We can also compare between the same zones in, the, in each city. Each zone is influenced by its surroundings, so sometimes there is the possibility to happen some difference even if the zone is classified as the same, but are in different areas, in different different place of the city, of the same city. This image shows the 17 zones, they are classified according to the form and function of the city, so it uses difference in the high, like low, mid and high rise, the distance, compact, open and sparse, and the, material, the materials of the built and natural ecosystems but also uses activities that happen in these zones. As an example of function, we have zone 10, which is the heavy industry zone. There is also some variable land cover properties. There are bare trees, snow cover, dry ground and wet ground. Geletic uh, defines different methods used for the classification in local climate zones. There's the manual classification that is based on primary and secondary data. The GIS based uses an automated classification from primary and secondary land use data. The remote sensing method uses uh, an automated classification using aerial and or satellite imagery and some training areas that are classified manually and there's the combined method, method that combines the GIS based and the remote sensing method for an even more precise classification. Campus dos Goitacazes, the city that is the object of my studies, is a medium city in the state of Rio de Janeiro. It is uh, 14 meters above the sea level. Its climate is tropical with a higher volume of rainfall in summer compared to winter. The winter is pretty dry. Although the territory is, is on the coast of the country, the urban center is almost, is almost 50 kilometers away from the coast. The average annual temperature is uh, 23 degrees Celsius, the average maximum is 29.7 and the minimum temperature is 19 uh, degrees Celsius. The average temperature is rising, as we can see in this image, that shows different time intervals, each one with uh, 30 years. And we can see that we have now an increase in a little bit more than 1 degree Celsius along the decades. Previous studies already evaluated the urban heat island in Campos Guetacazes. Salles carried out a surface temperature analysis through remote sensing and numerical modeling. Beraldi carried out a survey in environmental perception and the measurement of air temperature to mobile transects. They mapped the surface heat island and also allowed to measure the intensity of the urban heat island in two degrees. The method used here was a systematic review of articles using the Web of Science database and searching for articles on urban heat island and local climate zones. The objective is to understand the new paradigm of the local climate zones and how the studies in urban heat islands are being conducted using this classification of the urban space. Urban space. 
it will guide the study in the city of Campos do Guaitacazes. So, so we chose the local climate zones and humid heat island as the search terms filtered by language, search area and used some inclusion criteria. The results allowed us to see the constant increase in publications over the years. So we see that the classification method is being adopted by the scientific community. Uh, we can see that almost 90% is concentrated in Asia and Europe. China alone corresponds to 39.2% and Brazil corresponds to 5.1%. Regarding the classification of the land use and cover, there is the predominance of the remote sensing method, probably because it's easier to classify using this one, using some training areas to help and classify the whole area. The manual method still stands out after the, after the years and there are new methods like the course to find inside the manual method. And the GIS base is more accurate but needs more data and it's not available in most cities. Regarding softwares used to classify the areas, we see Google Earth and Sega G, GIS as the most used, reflecting the predominance of the remote sense, sensing method being developed by the WoodApp platform. This platform was updated recently and now there's the LCG, LCZ generator which optimizes this process. You don't need any other software. ArcGIS is the third in the list and it's mostly used by the GIS based method. Regarding the technique used to obtain and analyze the meteorological data, the most used are the fixed and or mobile transects. It is expected because the local climate zones were created focusing on the air temperature. But the remote sensing technique is highly used as well, probably because the ease of obtaining the data and the pandemic restrictions as uh, the opportunity to analyze a large area as well. The numerical modeling comes next and I highlight the WRF software because it allows to integrate the local climate zones in the models. Uh, regarding the softwares used in the, in the analysis of meteorological data, there's a great diversity of programs due to the different demands of study, uh, studies. Some are for spatial analysis, others for statistics and modeling. The studies might be conducted to evaluate the urban heat island, but they might continue to evaluate other things such as the impact on energy consumption and the health of the population. The classified urban areas serve as a, a, a basis for further studies beyond climate as well. As closing remarks, we can see the relevance of classification in local climate zones. It is growing over time. The different classification methods methods facilitate studies and I highlight the remote sensing method developed by WoodApt. It is also a crowdsourced effort in a global scale. About obtaining and analyzing meteorological data, we must consider time constraints, constraints and data availability. In Campos dos Goitacazes, I highlight the need for fixed transacts since the local climate zones were never used and these transacts will help to measure the urban heat highland intensity in different conditions and times of the day. Spring and summer are the most important seasons because of the high temperatures and uh, it is also important to identificate the factors that influence the urban heat island in the city. So the hourly measurements for a week will help uh, to identify the influence of the meteorological and urban characteristics in the urban heat island. Regarding the next step, some part uh, is already done, which is the classification of the city in local climate zones, as you can see. I use the LCZ generator and you can see the urban core is in red and orange mostly so uh, its, building, its buildings are mostly low rise there are mid and high rise buildings but they are very sparsely built so we can't classify the whole area as a mid or high rise we need, we need now to conduct measurements of the canopy layer air temperature for an hourly variation analysis of intra-urban local climate zones and maybe cross the results with some social and economic data. That's it. Thank you for your attention. Bye.